Hello friends and welcome back to another discussion on a lead code problem. So the problem for today is course schedule 2. Let's go through the problem description. There are a total of n courses you have to take. They build from 0 to n minus 1. Some courses may have prerequisites. For example, to take course 0, you have to first take course 1, which is expressed as a pair 0, 1. Given the total number of courses and a list of prerequisite pairs, return the ordering of courses you should take to finish all courses. There may be multiple correct orders, you just need to return one of them. If it is impossible to finish all courses, return an empty array. So now let's go through the examples. We have the input as two, which means there are two courses and we have been given a list which contains another list and it has elements 1 comma 0. So this means you have to complete course 0 before completing course 1 and hence the output is 0 comma 1. Again, we can go through the explanation. There are a total of two courses. To take course 1, you should have finished course 0. So the correct course order is 0 comma 1. So let's go through another example. Here we have four courses and the input is again a list of lists. We have elements 1 comma 0, 2 comma 0, 3 comma 1 and 3 comma 2. So that means to take course 1, you need to take course 0 before that. To take course 2, you need to take course 0 before that. To take course 3, you need to complete 1 before that. And again, similarly, you need to complete the course 2 before completing the course 3. So there are multiple outputs which are possible here. And 0, 1 comma 2 comma 3 or 0, 2, 1, 3 both are possible. Here in the note it's mentioned that the input prerequisites is a graph represented by a list of edges, not edges in C matrices. Read more about how a graph is represented here. You may assume that there are no duplicate edges in the input prerequisites. So all right, we can just go through this link quickly. So here what we have got is a list of edges which represents the graph. Another way to represent the graph is an adjacency matrix. Here we have a mapping from each node to itself and all the other nodes and any one in the matrix represents an edge. So here this means there's an edge between 0 and 1 and similarly again this means that there is an edge between 1 and 4 and so on. Another way to represent graphs is adjacency lists. Here, each node of the list contains another list which contains all the elements or all the nodes this node is connected to. So here, node 0 points to 1,6,8. That means there is an edge between node 0 and 1, node 0 and 6, and node 0 and 8. So if you compare between these two ways of storing, you see that the list is more compact and it uses less space. So we'll also try to use something which is pretty similar to lists and let's see how do we do it. If you would have watched my previous video, you know how should we approach this problem as this is a typical example of topological sort. But I'll just like to take a couple of minutes for a quick recap on how topological sort works. So as we had discussed in our last video, the first thing which we need to compute is the n degrees of all the nodes. Then we need the q to store the nodes in the correct order. And the algorithm which we used was find out all the nodes with n degrees 0, push it into the q and then pop each of them out and keep on storing them in our result list. Once we are done with this, we'll keep on updating the adjacent nodes of the initial nodes and whenever we find that the n degrees of any of the nodes become zero we'll push them again into the queue and we'll repeat this process till we visit all such nodes and finally this would give us the sorted result so the only extra thing which we need to do here from the example we discussed in the last video is to construct the graph into the way which we need it. So currently we have the prerequisite graph which holds only the edge lists. 
but we need to transform it into a graph which would solve our purpose. We can use an adjacency list to construct our graph and just modify it slightly so that we can improve its performance. So instead of storing all these nodes in a list, we can actually store them in a hash map for faster retrieval and we'll keep this part same where we are, you know, storing the adjacency list of each of the node. So let's see how do we write the code for it. So first we would need an array which would hold all the end degrees and we can initialize it as new int and it will be num courses. Next we'll use a hash map to construct our graph. So let's write a hash map integer and each of this value or each of this key will actually hold a list of integers. Graph is equal to new hash map. Now let's construct this graph by iterating over the edge list. So for int edges in prerequisites. So here let's define a convention start and end to get a sense of the direction. So in the example, 1 comma 0 means there is an edge from node 0 to 1 and not vice versa. So what we need to do here is write in start and this is actually edges 1 int end and this will be edges 0. So this actually means that there's a node called start and there's an edge like this. So whenever we find such edges, what we need to do is increase or increment the end degree of the node end. So end degree of end plus plus. And now we'll store this node into the graph. So for that we write graph dot put if absent node start comma new array list. So what this line means is if the graph doesn't contain the node start, then we initialize it with an empty array list. Otherwise, if we already had a start, then what we need to do is we'll have to fetch the list which it was storing in its value and append this node to it. So for that, we'll write graph.get start. This would give us the list which was present at the node start and we'll add the current node to it, which is the end node. So once we iterate through all the prerequisite edges, our graph will be formed. Now, as a second step, we need a queue, which again will hold integers. And there are quite a few ways to initialize a queue, but let's use a linked list. In this step, what we need to do is find out all the nodes whose end degree is zero. They are our first candidates to be inserted into the queue. So we'll iterate over all the courses. So int i is equal to zero, i less than num courses, i plus plus. Whenever we find end degree of a node to be equal to zero, all we have to do is insert this node into the queue. So we can write dot offer i so now we have constructed our graph we have computed the end degrees and we have also inserted the first set of nodes whose end degree was zero into a queue so next step if you remember is to pull this queue and update the end degrees of the adjacent nodes so for that we can write while queue is not empty course is equal to q dot poll. So this is the first course and the correct course in the ordering. And we'll have to insert it into a result set. So let's define that here. So let's call it order is equal to new end. And again, it will be num courses. We'll also need a variable to iterate over it. So let's define k and initialize it to zero. So since we know that this course is at its correct position, so we can write order 
k plus plus is equal to cos. So we have our first element correctly inserted into the result list. Now if you remember, we have to check all the adjacent nodes of this list. So first we can check if graph dot contains key course. So now we need to update the end degree of all the nodes which were adjacent to this node. So for that we'll write for int node in graph dot get course. This would return linked list which will be holding all the adjacent nodes of the node course. So now what we need to do is update the end degree of all the adjacent nodes and also at the same time check that if any of the adjacent nodes now have an end degree of zero, we would need to insert those nodes into the queue. So we write if minus minus end degree of node equal to equal to zero, we'll do a queue dot offer node. So at this line, we are updating the end degrees as well as checking that if any of the end degrees have become zero, then we'll insert that node into the queue. We are actually done with our algorithm and we can return order. There is just one case which we did not handle properly. We just assumed that there is a proper order possible for all the input values. But let's say the input values are not correct or let's say there is no ordering possible. Then the way to determine that is the ordered list should not contain the total number of courses because here the ordered list will only contain those courses between which a dependency can be formed. So a way to determine that is if k is equal to equal to num courses, that means all the courses were iterated and inserted into the list. And in that case, we need to return order. Else, we just need to return an empty list. So let's try to run this. So there was a typo there. It works. Let's submit it. Great, it works. Thank you guys for watching. I'll try to cover one more example on topological sort so that you can understand this concept really well and also use it and apply it in other algorithms. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Thank you.